So you should see the document now. Is that all fine? Yep. Okay. Um, I see a topic from Shelley. Want to start? Do I need to open the link? Uh, you can. It's just um. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Ah, okay. Because I don't see the like the mic uh, moving. Um, so you can open the link. It's it's just a reference to a bug. Um that happened in uh, with OADP um, that the restore failed because a virtual machine webhook um, denied the request. Uh, what happened is basically that um, they created their own data source in the golden images namespace. Then they backed up the VM uh, namespace and restored it to a different cluster where this data source um, didn't exist. And then the restore failed because the VM webhook denied the creation of the VM because the source doesn't exist. Although technically you don't really need the source anymore because the VM and the data volume is already populated. Um, so I've been working on removing um, these checks from the VM um, webhook. And today I talked with uh, Alex and Arnon uh, about what we have uh, in the in Kubevert and in CDI. And I don't know if Arnon joined. I uh, yeah. So he has all, also in a document that talked about these issues a while ago, apparently. And uh, he suggested solutions for both uh, CDI and Kubevert. Um, yes, I wanted to raise the this topic again. Um, the issue is that we, we check for the existence of the data source to do the authentication. Uh, so in Kubert, I think uh, it is safe to remove the authentication from the webhook and have it in uh, the reconcile loop. Uh, it's just that we will need to add another informer for data sources. And, and in CDI, I understand that there is a bigger problem with the, um, the whole user info. So we might need to think of a solution to do that because um, the same situation in this bug can happen with any data data volume referring to a data source. What is it? Uh, uh, just a minor question. Um, can, can't you simply solve it uh, for the restore case by uh, looking at the data volume and checking if it's, I don't know, uh, Populated or annotate to do something and just uh, skip the check or something? Yeah, I think there are, check in. Uh, yeah, that was, I was going to ask that too. I think that's, if, if this is an OADP thing, I think that there are already places where we skip if there's like the pre populated or populated for annotations. Why do you skip? You don't skip the creation of the data volume. No, you script, the, it's in the webhook. Some validations, but uh, in, in Kubert, it's not something you can do. What do you mean? In in Kubert, I do think the solution is to remove the the check for the data source. Right, but I don't think we want to. Uh, so, um, the for for the for. This issue specifically, you can create it anyways, not with backup and restore with any VM that you want to create that the data source doesn't exist yet. Yeah, so that that's a problem. I mean, um, this gets back to the uh, validation stuff. Um, the clone token and everything. Um, but for VM, at least for the, again, I'm talking only on the Kubert part. For the VM, you can, you are not actually creating the data volume 
before you check the authentication in the reconcile loop. So why do you need it in the webhook? Well, because that's where you have the user info. I mean, the- No, uh, not, in, not even in the VM with data volume template. I'm sorry, what? When you have a VM with data volume template, yeah, then you can create the VM and then before you create the data volume from the VM watch, then you, you can do there the authentication. No, it, I mean, you, you lose the user info. You don't have the user info in the controller in the VM. That's what, but that's what is done right now. You have an authentication in right, the right, but um, oh yeah, we checked the service account thing, right? Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. Um. Okay. Actually, I'm pretty sure I, a while ago I uh, wrote this like. Uh, CDI API helper for for the authorization part. I'm pretty sure it it whole the whole thing gets skipped if you have like the pre-populated or the static volume annotations. So uh, must be some something else trying to grab the data source. Like there's no. some other purpose. But it's... No. But again, it it comes back to if the for the restore, you're right. If it if it has the populator, um, maybe we can fix for that. But for um, eventual consistency, uh, it's not. If you do like GitOps stuff. So even for the OADP, OADP case, it fails even though like the, yeah, I'm confused. <laughs> so yeah, the OADP... I, think there are, I think there are a couple of things. So I think um, there may be some, so this is what appears to be happen, happening in the validation webhook, the authorization stuff that I think that uh, you worked on, Alex, and I that, yeah. that I was thinking about earlier happens in the mutating webhook. Yeah. So there must be some additional validation that I don't recall right now. Yeah, so maybe we can, again, divide it to two separate issues, the kubevert stuff and the CDI stuff. Because, again, in kubevert, since we have all the information in the VM controller, um, I don't see a reason why we need to have this in the webhook itself, since we do the, the authentication before creating the data volume in the reconcile loop. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's fine, at least on the Kubert side. Yeah. Okay. I cool. think the data source not existing is trickier on the data volume side. Yeah. So. The keyword part is settled then. <laughs> I can continue with my work. Um, but <clears> since <throat> I talked <laughs> I talked with Arnon about the um, CDI issue, we can also talk about it. What's the solution? Is there a solution? Because it, it's still kind of maybe we can fix the restore part with the with the annotation for um uh, restore, but uh, for um, eventual consistency here, maybe we have an issue. Is there good enough to prevent from doing eventual consistency with data volume? Or do we have another solution? Arnon, you want to say what you have in mind? Uh, not sure. Uh, we're thinking too much about it. Uh... <laughs> Um, we have the issue of the user info in uh, the webhook, 
which uh, of course we don't have uh, when we get to the reconcile loop. So uh, pathing it in any way seems like a bit uh, seems a bit hacky, and uh, I'm not sure how much we would like to do stuff like this. What do you think about Jenny? So I wouldn't ever pass the user info. I just think it's a question of uh, whether we can remain like really secure if we move the CDI API check to the controller. Like if there's no security concern in doing that. Yeah, I mean, the the webhook is the only place where we have the user info and we can't really, um, realistically, that's where you have to deal with this stuff. So could we like try to use the same mechanism and well, I guess that's a bit clunky. Could use the mechanism from Kubert where you just loop over the service accounts in the namespace and you end up with a default if none specified. Mm. Um, but that's, yeah, we don't have a service account in, in the CDI. To, yeah, change the API somehow. Um, I think the CDI, um, Mutation webhook, the old the token stuff is just is just like the classic exception for you know compromising the eventual consistency. We, yeah, we I think once up... once if we uh, once we have the um, you know it's been in progress for a while, but once we have cross namespace uh, authorization stuff. We can create, you know, we can have, um, you know, uh, data import cron or SSP or whomever create all that, all those authorizations, and then we won't need it. But um, yeah, I, I think until we have the the Kubernetes support for cross namespace authorization, we're kind of stuck with this scheme for now. Okay. So from uh, the Cuber perspective. And you, and you say that um, in the CDI, we don't have the, pro the problem with the restore because we don't do the validation in case it's uh, populated. So at least from, from that uh, perspective. Yeah, we don't yeah I think that there, there are cases where, uh, well, at least in the mutation webhook, if there are those um, certain annotations, it just won't add the token, assuming that it's not needed, you know? Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, so, so the only issue that is left here is this small eventual consistency with CDI, which is might be a bit unfortunate that we can do like GitHub stuff well, the, the I am wondering though, I, I feel like, yeah, so I'm thinking going back to the Qbert side, yeah. you know, Qbert, so it's going to have to watch and wait for data sources now. Yeah, right? that's what I said. Yeah. That's kind of ugly. Yeah, we'll have to add an informer for the data source. Oof. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, people may not like that. Yeah, I didn't like it either, but uh, currently it's it's a really issue. Like, I don't know, checking in the VM uh, webhook uh, if the data volume exists or, or have an annotation is also like not so pretty. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking of the code that creates data volume. So it has to check. So, okay, not only does if it will create the data volume when the data volume doesn't exist and 
if it refers to a, a data source, the data source exists. Yeah, it will have to add a, a watch for data sources and uh, um, PVC sources. And well, the, the, sources. the hard thing about that, though, is that it's it's a watch for like all data sources in the cluster. Mm -hmm. That is mentioned in the data volume. Right, you just you, we have to you can watch. do an informer with the index. You have to add an index. Yeah, thing. an index for oh. this, the source of data volume template. Yikes. <laughs> you don't need to index it. Uh, I think, if I remember, uh, both the data volume and the data source are, are annotated with uh, the data for clone. Uh, Name or something. Well, it may not be a data import chron. It could be someone's. Uh... Right. right. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is terrible. And question: If if the VM controller is the one creating the data volume, don't we don't we go through the data volume mutation webhook too? Yeah. Sure. So why do you need the authentication in KubeVert at all? Yeah, but you go through because the, the uh, uh, right because it's two different things. Because when it's created, it's created as the service account for you know Vert controller, which has permission to do whatever. But when we authenticate it, we authenticate against the service account for the VM, which is different. It's a different service account, so. But you say that the mutating webhook of data volume has the info of who created the data volume. No, it's not the same. It, yeah, it does. But it so the 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 problem is that will always pass for Vert controller because Vert controller can has permission to do whatever. Oh, I see. But so in the VM controller, so before Vert controller creates action. anything, it has to check on the other service account to see that. Uh, yeah. Okay. I see. I see. Yeah, so yeah, I don't see another way to go around this. Yeah, no, for sure. This is like a, this step is required for any any controller that embeds uh, data volume in their CRDs. Oh. This is why we invested the time in making the the SDK for authorizing them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so from the CDI side, let me just put that down. Forget what what the mechanism is called. It's just like a reference reference grant. Does that sum up the discussion? Uh, you may just want to add to the keyword thing that we have to like watching. Um... Data sources, data yeah. uh, source PVC and source snapshot. Yeah, yeah. it sucks. Yeah. I also don't like the asymmetry because if someone doesn't use data volume templates, then the call will fail right away. But if they do use data volume templates, it will pass. Why would it fail away? Sorry, I have uh, some. 
my neighbor's doing some weed whacking. I actually um, didn't hear any noise from your side. But... <laughs> um, it, so it's a, it seems like kind of a weird asymmetry. So if someone has a, you know, using data volume templates, data source doesn't exist, fine, no problem. Mm -hmm. um, but if, but, but if, we said, yeah. But we said that if the data volume, like for data volume, we have the solution of the populated. Like, yeah, for the, the eventual consistency, it's not um, symmetrical. Yeah. For restore, it, it will be. Yeah. Mm. How otherwise would like, is there any idea how to do it without watches, without these watches? You could just do a requeue every five seconds or whatever. But... For uh, non existing data volumes? Non existing data volume, not non existing data, data source. source. Yeah. Which I don't, I don't think it's better. Oh, it's not better. It's just less code. <laughs> it's... Yeah, but what will it be acceptable in Cube for? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, don't I, know. I need it, to it, do it, watch not only for data source CRD, but also for PVCs and snapshots that are sources for data volume. The PVC part probably exists still. I'm not sure. I think we also have an informer there for PVCs that are volumes for data, for VM, but not data source, not source for data volume. Because I, I did try it. I removed the webhook. I created a VM with data volume template source as a PVC. And once I created the PVC, it didn't rec reconcile. Yeah, it's, so, well, the truth is, so, hmm, let me think for a sec, because I'm thinking, it, uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is tough. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're controllers going to have to watch snapshots and PVC sources now. Uh, yeah, seems like it. Uh, so that, so that, and that, but that's not related to data source, right? Um, it's not related to the authentication. No, it's related to allowing to create a, a VM with uh, when the source doesn't exist yet. Well. Hmm. But we only, Once. oh boy. But it's really only if the namespace doesn't exist. Because I think we allow, you can still do the authorization if, if uh, the namespace exists, but the resource doesn't. Right? Uh, wait. Which one? A any of this authorization stuff that we do, uh, it. The well with the data source, obviously the data source has to exist. But if you're the data source ultimately resolves to a PVC or a snapshot, which may or may not exist. Right. And to do authorization, only the namespace has to exist. The, the like the um, the resource doesn't. Oh. Um so CDI handles the case where uh, a PVC or a snapshot does not exist, but like you can create the data volume and it can do the authorization checks, but the namespace has to exist. Oh, right. So you, you can skip watching the underlying source, like the PVC or the snapshot? I, I think, is... but, but the namespace has to exist. <laughs> yeah, okay. this is getting too complicated. Like, 
Uh, sucks. How will this look with the reference grants? Like, would we have to? Um, no, it's like eventually consistent, right? So you only create the the data volume or whatever, and you just wait for it to converge. Yeah, I mean, what will happen is. Um, uh, I think, I think we'll just do the checking of the resource grant or resource grant uh, or reference grant, whatever it's called, um, in one place, hopefully the populator. So if that doesn't exist, it will, you know, the target will just be pending. Right. Okay. Let me write the namespace bit down. Uh, oh, but I see that we are not in Kubert, but we are not check, um, checking for PVC snapshot. It's just that we fail to create data volume because the source doesn't exist. Like we are um, rejecting maybe. But I think we're relying on the check in the webhook or something, maybe. I know it's. Unable to create data volume manifest. Okay. Well, that's another way to handle it. You can just <laughs> fail and then have that retry kick in. Ah, so why? Maybe I, I flunked something in the way. <laughs> I need to, to retry it myself. Maybe I didn't create the right source. <laughs> So yeah, may maybe if we don't need the the informal for PVCs and snapshot only for data sources. Well, I think what will happen now is uh, right. So if whatever the source name, if the source namespace doesn't exist, it, you can't create the data volume, or I, or I think authorizing the VM won't work either, right? Because the because of the token stuff. Yeah, but if the if the data volume fails to to create, I don't care because it will requeue because of the error. Um, yeah, yeah. The problem with that is then you get into that exponential back off, which um, not as good as a watch or. Um, but yeah. Mm. <laughs> But so yeah, then, it's probably <laughs> yeah, the, some of these cases are kind of, I don't know, cases maybe. If it's only a short time where like the data source doesn't exist or whatever, then, you know. Right, so. I think we're good on this topic, Shelley, right? So we're adding an informal for data sources and. I think Michael's saying that you could even avoid that if it's only a short period that the data source doesn't exist, just let it rick you. Who said that it's a short. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, we don't know that. Well, that's like the whole, you know, eventual. Eventual consistency. If, if the, if, well, then then it then that's just um, right. The if the idea is that eventually these things should are expected to converge, then right. Okay, so I'm removing the check from the webhook. I'm returning an error if the data source doesn't exist. Um, 
and I need to check why I didn't uh, requeue in my case. <laughs> but yeah. So it, if you create a data volume with source that doesn't exist yet, it should um, it should allow it to be created. Assuming the namespace exists. That's that's what we have currently in the code. I think so. I okay. Yeah, so, I mean, it, so, right. So creating, if you, no, I, I'm pretty sure that'll fail if the data source doesn't exist, right? TDI doesn't allow that. Yeah, the, author, the, the uh, um, authorization will fail in, in the controller. But uh, yeah, I mean, it'll get you know, work controller and we'll just see the error and retry, I guess. Yeah, it will, yeah, it will pop an event and retry. Yeah, I think that, I think that, yeah, I think it's better than just doing the watch. I, I mean, you can do the watch, but I think it'll just be, um, we're getting into, Things that Kubert shouldn't care about. Yeah. By the way, by the way, Kubert already has a watch for DVs, right? And and the CDI DV controller already watches data sources. So why do we need to add the data source the, watch to the data volume? Doesn't uh, exist yet. Oh right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's getting super confusing. Yeah. I think that's what Michael's saying that if if any other controller uses our data volumes, then they're in for a headache. Hopefully it gets better when we switch to the reference grants. Mm -hmm. They also do the, the authentications like we do in Kubeful? They must, otherwise it's not secure to, if they're like, if yeah. they're equivalent of vert controller just creates everything a user throws at it, then yeah. people could steal data from other yeah. spaces. The, the the resource checking is gonna happen in the CSI driver for like um CSI clones and for volume snapshot um clones. And then yeah, I think we're gonna have to do it like every driver is gonna have to do that so it'll probably just go in one of the like sidecars. But for populators, I think every populator is going to have to check the uh, grants manually, which is going to be annoying, but it's, you know, not complicated. Right. So Shelley, if I have your blessing, I will go to the next topic, which is the issues. Yes, thank or... you. Sure. And so if anyone has any other big topic, that's uh, welcome. Otherwise, I'll give it a bit of time and just open up the issues meanwhile. Nice. Ah, okay. At least I translated it after a while. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're questioning our um, decision to keep images raw. Okay, so I think we're good on that one, but I'm not sure how do we filter those like just recently updated or is this already good enough? Uh, we usually start by checking the new ones, so we should now check the that first one, but then we can use a different sorting. Okay. Mm 
Hmm. Actually, I'm not, I've never used these targets directly. Maybe these are wrong, but let's see. Okay, so what is that target? I guess that would build them. And actually, I'm not sure what would that do. Like, uh, I always use battle. Uh, battle basically build like the basil. Like, it basically builds the, the images, but I think they're, you know, in basil cache. Mm. You know, they're not in a registry or anything. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. But I think if you want to, like, I think, um, you know, the thing to do if you want to get it into a registry is make push, right? With a registry name and a tag. Yeah. Because I think, yeah, the build image is just, just like it probably just makes all the layers and sticks them in the basil cache and tar files or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So yeah, we they should do make push like, you know, I think that I think, you know, um to do it you can do like, you know, um like So like I do something like this when I want to push to a registry. I I hate this read AI meeting notes thing. Um, What's that? <laughs> Let's see, maybe I can disable it. Oh no, probably only Adam can. Type read stop to disable, opt out to delete. If you look at the chat I just sent, like this is what I do when I wanna push to a... Okay, thanks. Um, that would like if the registry doesn't exist, that would fail though, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's pushing to a, a public registry, so yeah. Also, that example is pointing to Michael's repo, yeah, yeah. That's an example, I mean, yeah. Right. So I'm thinking like, what's the basil equivalent of like keeping them, exp like giving it to you and uh, like you have in, with Docker images where you could just see them and, you know, do stuff with them, push your own, push yourself or whatever. I don't think there is actually. I mean, I don't think you can work you know, run a, uh, start a container from an image that only lives in your basil cache in some weird way. Okay. I think this is good enough, but if they really insist on like uh, trying to find something that that would skip the push, yeah, I mean there may be a Basil command to like directly do it. I just don't know. 
Yeah, and then they have to use the builder because they probably don't have Bazel set up on the laptop, on the workstation. Nah, no. So I think that's uh, it. Could be interesting in this issue if uh, if make push isn't good enough. Right. So we're done with the new issues. Maybe I'll just sort by recently updated. Right, so S3, this got marked as rotten. So it would close if we don't change that. And I'm assuming this this is still work in progress, so it should still still be active. Yeah, we probably want to take that off. Okay, cool. Right. Okay, cool. So we have Lee managing this. So just go to the next one, which is another rotten issue. Wasn't this done? Yeah, I see oh. there's a one PR attached. Let's see. Okay. So I think this is just tracked in the whole S three ninety efforts. Maybe even close that. Let me find a... Guess this is all encapsulated under this one card. Yeah, I think we can close this one since there wasn't any reply. I I think the deletion was just done um, without deleting the CR first. So they bypassed that. So I, I don't think there's a place to document that in our repo. So I'll just close that. Okay, I'll do this uh, one or two more. Okay, don't don't think we have anything to add. Uh, 
I think we move this conversation to Slack. Wow, and we'll kill the 32 gigs of RAM. Maybe 32 is just what the node has and not the importer pod or the cloner pod. So I guess they have quota and they don't realize it. Otherwise, Pretty sure that's what happens here. Uh, I must specify limits. Right. Uh, I forget how the resource is called that uh, makes it mandatory that you specify the limits. All right, maybe a limit range. Okay, I think this is um, the last one we'll do today. So I'll give another chance for people to bring up topics. Okay, so I guess we'll end today's meeting and see you in two weeks. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye.